Hey everybody, this is Pete. This is Don. And I... this is Wickham Road Music. And we are going to be doing some reviews on some awesome gear, doing a little education, getting uh, some of those questions answered that maybe even on some of the other videos that you're seeing online that they're not unpacking enough where, hey, I, I didn't know that about the guitar. I didn't realize that about this piece of gear. And so we're gonna kind of take a, an in-depth look, even if you're a beginner, intermediate, or even an advanced player, I think the information that we're gonna share with you is gonna be very helpful. So, Don, what do we got today? So uh, we have a great little Takamini here uh, from their G series. Look at it's that. It's the GS330S. Wow. Just a beauty, beauty of a guitar. This thing is very, very nice. I mean, when we're talking about um, guitars, <laughs> Hi, Jack. That's awesome. Hey, Jackie. Um, when we're talking about guitars, uh, sometimes there are instruments that kind of just fall in that sweet spot mm -hmm. of playing, you know, and it doesn't matter if you're, again, if you're intermediate or if you're a beginner or even an advanced player, this is one of those kind of guitars that just goes across the board. It does indeed. You know, the dreadnought shape gives it the, the bigger sound, um, but that What do you mean balances. by that? What well, do you mean by that? When you're talking about size of guitars matters. Okay. okay, size matters. Um, and Dreadnought really was the first shape for, for steel string guitars. It okay. was bigger and it gave a fuller sound than, than the nylon shaped guitars that, that were out at the same time. Still are. Um, so Dreadnought just gives you a bigger sound. Jumbo is even bigger, uh, orchestra smaller. So just generally across the board, you, size matters. So I guess it dictates like what you want or what you might be playing in terms of your style or even if you're going to be playing with a band or not. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll discuss that a little bit more, but Don, you're right. This has got a nice round and a uh, very balanced sound to it. Uh, why would we want cedar over something else? It, it, again, not just the size matter, but the wood matters. What the guitar is made of always matters. You've got your spruce sound, which is a little bit more punchy. Um, you hear a lot of that with, with bluegrass because they want it to come through. Mm. Um, Call that the banjo killers. The ba yeah, there you go. Uh, because those banjos are so bright and yeah. so powerful. Yeah, they're loud. Um, and then you've got cedar, which is a little bit more mellow, a little bit more warm. Um, and then you've got mahogany, which is still warmer and more round, even more, uh, mm. just darker. So I can tell right out of the gate that this is a solid top cedar. And one of the ways that you can tell, guys, is by this. What you want to do is you want to go to the sound hole or actually just go online and Google it. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> that, <laughs> you could do that. Cheating. That's cheating. But if you're at the store, if you're shopping, and, and really when it comes down to guitars, and especially acoustic guitars, and I'm, even, I'm an advocate even for electric guitars, you need to go to the store and play these things, okay? Absolutely. Online, yeah, you can take a chance, but I'm telling you what, they're all different. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I mean, I yep. played Stratocasters and Les Pauls, and there's been some that have been better than others, you know. Absolutely. And uh, I'm really, I was glad that I went to the store and played them, you know. Well, well there's, you know, they're they're coming off of a factory line, um, even though, and there's still a high tolerance, but there are still slight differences. It's just the nature of of the beast. And those slight differences can make a real difference in whether you like the guitar or whether you don't, whether you connect to the guitar or whether you don't. Um, going online, you're not going to know. You're going to be rolling the dice. So getting back to the point here was looking at the sound hole, if you were to see the top and you can see the edge of the wood that's there, and I'm not too sure if the camera can pick that up or not, but the point is, is you want to look and see, does the grain go all the way through mm -hmm. that top of the guitar? If you see lines kind of going through in the uh, opposite direction, kind of going around the top and where it looks like there's layers, that's like a pancake, what you have is a laminate top. So what that basically is telling you is, is it's going to be a less expensive guitar. Should be. There's glue in the top, which means that it's not going to resonate like a solid top guitar is going okay. to. Glue just does not mature as uh, as normal wood. Mm -hmm. Wood. That makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so take a look there, guys, and make sure that you can see that because that, that's going to dictate quality for you, and that's going to dictate whether it sounds really good or not. Um, some of the other things we got here is the uh, the back of the guitar and the sides of the guitar. Now on this one, um, this is a laminate back and sides. Correct. Okay, so what does that mean, Don? What do we got when we're talking about laminate? Well, it just you're talking about just like you were talking about with the laminate on the top. You've got those layers of of wood glued together and stacked together. Well, that's what they do for the back and sides. Um, saves on the overall cost of the guitar uh, and price it. of the guitar, yeah. um, and 
not as as critical to the sound of the guitar, um, arguably so. Yeah. Um, while you can tell the difference when you've been playing a while between a, an all solid guitar versus a, a solid top and laminate guitar, just like a solid or a laminate top versus a solid top, yeah. um, it, it's it becomes more of a price point issue. Price point. Well, this one falls into a good price point. You know, this is sort of middle of the road in terms mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, if you're going to purchase. I mean, right. what's coming in at about? Retail, retail is sitting just under 500 Right under $500, which is really great. And But it's a versatile instrument. So whether you are professional or beginner or you just want to sort of play at home or maybe you're playing, heck, in a band or for your church or mm -hmm. something like this, this is a great instrument to have. So it's this NATO back and side. So that NATO basically means it's a type of wood. It comes from mora trees. Um, we also know that it looks a little bit like Honduras mahogany, if you take a, even a closer look at it. It's real pretty. It looks really nice, and this particular model has a very nice book match on it. And if you're not familiar with that terminology, what a book match is is when you have two pieces of wood, or literally it takes two pieces of wood that are going to be uh, glued together uh, to be able to make the entire back and also the top as well. So the top is book match. You're going to have two pieces, and you want those two match okay when they say book match that means it should look identical it should look like a mirror if you were to put a mirror up there mm -hmm. that's what you're going to see and this one they did a great job i like the way the design looks and uh it feels good too i mean it's, it's really really nice and, and you know pete one of the things i like about this guitar is the binding okay uh that cream binding it blends really nicely between the cedar wood and and the nato wood it it, do, it doesn't yeah, right it's yeah. not too startling um yeah, it's not like so it's a nice white mm -hmm. kind of thing yep. okay yeah it's cool Excellent, man. All right. Well, the other thing I want to point out, too, is that we're dealing with uh, rosewood. Okay, beautiful rosewood. And right now, Don, what's happening with the rosewood? Well, there's, there's uh, new regulations uh -oh. for rosewood um, where they want to make sure that uh, all the manufacturers, all the folks that use road, rosewood rather with, with whatever they're making, whether it's a guitar or whether it's the toggles on a purse, it doesn't matter. They want to make sure that that rosewood is harvested correctly, is not from the, the endangered rosewood. Um, it's, it's, a very, it's a very positive, very good environmental concern. Um, and the guitar industry, unfortunately, it, it, well, fortunately, they've taken it seriously for very for ma many, many years. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's the documentation. So it's causing a bit of a slowdown with us getting rosewood um, guitars and rosewood, anything rosewood, into the United States. So it's kind of like what Brazilian was. Brazilian, right. I mean, that, that stuff is... It's yeah. a completely endangered species, can't even touch it anymore. Absolutely, and that's yeah. what they want to make sure that none of the rosewood we're getting nowadays is the Brazilian rosewood, yeah. unless it's been harvested correctly. Yes, so uh, a couple of other points. So we have the uh, rosewood that's going to be used for the uh, fretboard. Very, very nice. We're looking back here, rosewood as well, okay, and at the, uh, at the bridge. And um, nut size. Now, nut size to me, I'm a guy who's got pretty big hands, and what happens with me, Don, is that if I don't have a wide enough neck, I get claustrophobic in my fingers. <laughs> that, does anybody else feel the way? I mean, am I the only one? No, you're the only one. Thought so. <laughs> Thought so. so this one's one and five eighths. Mm -hmm. Feels pretty good. You know, it's it's relatively wide. There's some that are wider, but mm -hmm. uh, it feels good. I mean, you can actually get into it, and you can uh, you know you can play and. And I don't feel that claustrophobic on it at all. I feel no. good. So it's a dreadnought guitar. So nice big round sound, and um, so it can be used. I find that like dreadnoughts like real versatile. I mean, mm -hmm. that's like a versatile instrument. Some of the other sizes, what ends up happening is um, it's not a bad thing. It's just you're gonna have to buy more guitars, which is always a good thing. <laughs> and buy we more like guitars. Gear. And so <laughs> we like guitars. And, you know, it's not such a bad thing to have multiple guitars. Because if you have certain guitars that are going to be, you know, a little bit more on the throaty side, I use that kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe that sounds goofy. But, you know, it just, it punches through, you know, it punches through a band a little bit more where a rounder sounding guitar might get a little lost, man. You're going to have to do some serious EQ and to yeah. get that guitar where it needs to be. Absolutely. And, you know, when you, certain guitars lend themselves more to a finger picking style okay. than, and more of a, of a 
of a chordal st style. Dreadnoughts for me, dreadnoughts and jumbos tend to lend themselves to the big chords, to yeah. the to the being with the band and playing with the band kind of thing, and not finger picking your way out of it. Cool. Well, um, hey, I'm gonna jam a little bit here, and then we're gonna probably just call this one. Well, before before you do that, one of the things I, that I, I've noticed about this guitar, and, and we might want to point out, is what's that? It's the stringing is through the bridge as opposed to using the usual oh, yeah. pins. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Look at that. So a little bit simpler to string um, mm -hmm. if you're doing it yourself. Um, or if we're doing it for you. Um, so just a, a, one less thing to worry about is losing those pins. So we got some nice big sound here. And right now I'm not even using a pick, I'm just sort of using my nails here, just kind of strumming back and forth. But... Mm -hmm. It's nice and round, what do you think? It does, it's really, it's got a great sound to it. Um, one of the things that, that, that you find with guitars is they sound one way when you're playing them, and they sound very different when, they, when you're hearing it. Right. Um, so it's always important to do both, to, have, to play it so that you like the sound, you like the feel, but also have somebody at the store play it towards you so you can hear what your, your folks are going to hear when they're listening to you play. Well, let's demonstrate that. Oh. Here, you do it. You play a little bit, and I want to hear what it sounds like. Okay, because I was going to say it sounded very different than when I was playing it, yeah. not just, you know, because you're playing it. Well balanced. It's mm -hmm. uh, got a nice bass projection on it. Uh, the, the highs aren't being lost, and uh, feels good. And the intonation felt really good too on it. So, well, guys, I think that's going to conclude this one. My hope is that you got a lot out of it. And uh, for more information, please contact Wickham Road Music on WickhamRoadMusic.com, and uh, we'd be happy to help you in any way that we can. We got a full line of guitars here, uh, many different brands to choose from both in acoustic and electric, as well as amplifiers, basses, and bass amps. Uh, we also have home recording, and uh, also a band instrument rental, and a, a ton of other things. I mean, percussion. just a very well-rounded music store, percussion section as well. So uh, just want to uh, encourage you guys to reach out. We'd love to hear from you.